And that was a great track from our upcoming guest. The song is called Downtown. You know, that song's a really great summer song, but it's a great thing to keep the Minnesota sound, the Minneapolis sound alive. And our next guest hails from the Minnesota First Family of Music. And he's been busy during these past year making music with his family and friends, really inspirational stuff too. He's been a longtime friend of our radio show here. Jason Peterson Delaire, JP Delaire is with us. How you doing, brother? Hey, Joe. Great to be on with you. How are you? Uh, I'm doing fine, and uh, we got a little Minneapolis taste of snow today, but uh, how, how are things up your way? You know what? It's been cold as heck for about the last week. We, we touched about minus 20 degrees actual temperature a couple days last week. So oh. we're, we're in the, uh, they call it the uh, polar vortex, man. Yeah, how do you keep the uh, the car charged up? Uh, make sure you got you more than a, more than a half a tank of gas, man, and hope for the best. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, you know, we talked about you making music, and, and during this time, uh, pandemic pretty much shut musicians and everybody down for the beginning of last year. What what exactly have you been doing and trying to keep your sanity alive and at your craft? Oh, man. Do we got a couple hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we share whatever you want to roll with. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, I don't know if your listeners know, but my, my day job is I'm the saxophone player and keyboard player for Michael Bolton. So oh, I yeah, usually yeah. usually spend half the year on the road all over the world doing shows with Michael. But obviously the pandemic has brought our industry, our live concert tours to a complete halt. I mean... I've done nothing with him for going on close to a year. So the good part about that kind of, you know, it's allowed me to time to get back to kind of writing my own jams again. And that part has been fun. Um, So one of the things I've been working on, uh, I think you've played this track a few times on your show. Uh, I did that this about maybe it was released in August of the track stand and fight with my buddy Dave Ellis. I think you've played that one Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah. We It's up playing now, so, yeah. Yep, and then uh, the latest, greatest is a track called Love Can Heal the World, and that features the lovely Olita Adams on vocals, Jared Lawson, and the OG Rocky Robbins is also on there, lo- right. as, well, as well as my family, the Peterson family, the Steels, whom you know from working with Prince, oh, yeah. J.D., Javita, Gerilyn Steele, and also the Capri, glee adult community choir from north minneapolis the capri was where prince did his first show that's right yeah that's the capri theater is is it still standing or yeah they they've really they put a bunch of money in uh renovating that theater it's beautiful now jason peterson delaire is with us here on joe kelly radio and uh the video great great video professionally done and everything very moving uh, Love Can Heal the World is on YouTube. Uh, also, Stand and Fight, another great video. You know, you you shut down, you know, going on tour, I'm sure, a big paycheck, you know. But, uh, man, you, you you didn't cheat on the videos. You did some great videos, sinking some stuff into there. So you're to be commended. Well, thank you very much. I have to give my, my dear brother, uh, Nelson Braxton, credit for the videos. He, in addition to being the bass player with Michael Bolton's band, we, we spend a lot of time on the road touring together uh he's also a brilliant videographer and he did both the stand and fight video and uh love can heal the world so hats off to nelson for putting putting that together them both you know yeah we play uh some of his music on our show the braxton brothers right right they they consistently have charting uh smooth jazz tunes really smooth stuff great stuff so where, where's the best spot right now people can uh, purchase the songs, that the current songs in, in the catalog of Jason Peterson to left? Well, I prefer iTunes because people actually buy the record. If you go to Spotify, it's on Spotify. And, right. and you know, all the standard streaming places like Apple Music, Tidal, Rhapsody, all that. So, you know, as you know, I've had various releases throughout my career under both jason peterson delaire and jp delaire so you played downtown 
I released that as JP Delaire. That's kind of an alter ego. And then uh, right. also my In My Life record is on under JP Delaire. And then my first record, I, I think you remember this one, it's called Slow Jams. That was released under Jason Peterson right. Delaire. And then the latest two singles, Stand and Fight and um, Love Can Heal the World, are both under Jason Peterson Delaire. Because my, my baby sister, Vanessa, has kind of taken over uh, managing me and getting me organized. And she's like, let's get back to Jason Peterson Delaire. So that's yeah, why this uh, is working real hard for you. Good stuff. She is. I got to, I got to sell some records, man. She's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, the family discount, right? Definitely family discount for sure. Right. So uh, I have to go. I, I have you know, to go uh, smack somebody around every now, now and then for you know that's part of, part of my payback. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> your younger sister, right? Yeah, baby sister. Yep. Right. So you know one one thing that's real notable with your family. You, I mean, I see and a lot of people see it. Um, how close you guys are together. You work on each other's products, projects, and you're hanging out together. And you know, of course, sure. music was instilled from from the patriarch and matriarch of the family um your grandparents but what, what do you think it is you, your family uh pulls together and helps each other out so so much because you hear a lot of different stories from other people other families sure i i'll just say we grew up and this was you know my, my grandmother's doing my grandmother Jeannie arlen peterson she passed away i think seven years ago but she was just a, she was such a loving woman. I didn't know my grandfather, her husband, because he passed away right before I was born. His name was Willie. But all the kids, uh, my grandmother really instilled love in us. And it was such a cool family to grow up in because everybody was very much nurturing of each other. It, it, you know, even outside of music, it was just a very loving family, very close knit, big family. Um, and the music part of it was just an, an offshoot of that love. And it turned into we all ended up playing together and we're all very supportive of each other's projects. Um, and it's just, man, what a treat to grow up in a family that is as close as we are. And, you know, we've been given the talent too to go play music together. We actually just did a beautiful show at this place called Crooners. Uh, supper club in uh, it's just north of Minneapolis and we did a special performance for my uncle Billy's 70th birthday party and that was just 70? so fun Se yeah uncle Billy just turned 70 if you can believe that. Wow. yeah but we we did a little impromptu concert and Patty Linda Ricky Billy uh, did I miss any of them I don't want to miss anybody and my little cousin Tracy Sang Vanessa sang a little bit, um, right. and actually Dale Alexander, who used to play drums uh, with Madhouse, is a oh, family yeah, friend of ours. Because Paul, I think Paul had another function, so he missed part of the first show. So Dale came and played drums with us, and that was a groove. But we just had so much fun, and it just reminded us of how much we we truly miss doing what we do with this lockdown. Man, I swear I've played maybe four gigs in a year wow. and it man just playing for a live audience and getting together and playing it was so cathartic and you know we realized just how how much we miss it and i know people miss going to hear music too it's, it's part of the fabric of society going out and hanging out with your friends and hearing music it's hopefully this will come to an end soon you know yeah everybody get vaccinated up and you know, it's yep. safer to go outside and go shoulder to shoulder, no, maybe further apart. But I mean, right. Well, I, I hope fortunately, so. the yeah, the outdoor gigs might help this summer. So, yeah, we I think I think we'll be able to. I'm not sure how much I'll be doing with Michael Bolton, but definitely some local things. Maybe with my family should start opening up once the weather allows. You know, there can be social distancing yeah. outside. And I think people are more comfortable doing that, you know. Jason Peterson Delaire is with us and uh, he's provided two great songs and videos, Stand and Fight with his buddy Dave Ellis and uh, 
Love Can Heal the World with Alita Adams, Ricky Peterson, Vanessa, Linda Peterson, Patty Peterson. Uh, you've got Steels on there. Jared, Jared Lawson, Lawson right? yep. Uh, Ricky, Rocky Robbins. Rocky Robbins, yeah, what a voice. He still is singing great. So, And uh, the choir is, uh, the Capri Theater Choir is in the, like the Zoom singing, right? Yes, yeah, they... The you know, I'll tell you, right? I'll tell you a little bit about just how that how that song came to be. Um, you know, us being from Minneapolis, um, it was a really, really powerful moment, you know, with with the unfortunate death of, of George Floyd happening right here in our city. Right. And our city was on fire. You know, Joe, it was like they were rioting and buildings were burned up and people were really hurting and pissed off. And it was just a bad deal in Minneapolis. And I remember one day my sister, Vanessa, was, you know, we had a deep conversation and she said, we have to do something to, to help the vibe or be part of the solution here. And I'm like, yeah, what are you thinking? She's like, we should do like a song, like a we are the world kind of thing. And I said, OK, cool. I'm with that. Um, so I went down to my studio, looked through a few things, and I had a little scratched out idea of what ultimately became Love Can Heal the World. I had an initial concept for that. I said, what do you think of this? She's like, oh my gosh, that would be perfect. So that kind of started the ball rolling on, you know, bringing Love Can Heal the World to fruition. And so I had the basic demo down. I called my uncle Ricky, who was a co-producer on this, to play on it. Um, my buddy Dave DeLome. I, I would send these tracks out because obviously we can't get together during COVID. So I started emailing tracks out and we were, you know, sending a lot of files back and forth uh, through the Internet and Dropbox and and putting, you know, the band together. Right. Jerry Lopez played on a great guitar player from Santa Fe out in Las Vegas. Lenny Castro, Joe Finger uh, and Nelson Braxton played bass on it. So we compiled the band part first. So I got the tracks on a nice and then I had to figure out, OK, who's going to sing on this i'd like to have some guest vocalists so i called olita adams and you know i used to play in olita adams band and she was like yeah absolutely she loved the um the heart behind the song and what we were trying to do called our dear friend um jared lawson and then i also called rocky robbins and they all agreed to be a part of this thing and then we also i called jd steel and because I kind of wanted a choir on this. And he said, Jason, I'm working with this choir, the Capri Glee. And so we got them involved and then the Peterson family and the Steele family. And this whole monstrosity of a production started to take shape. And so that was the music part. And then Ricky mixed it. He came over to my apartment and mixed the song. And we uh, so we had a nice sounding record. And a guy named Greg Ryerson, who used to master some of Prince's stuff, uh, did the mastering on it. So I think the record sounds really nice. So I'm happy with that part. But then we had to put the, the video part together. And that was, you know, how we see these COVID music videos these days. Everybody started putting in, you know, sending me their cell phone videos. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I had like this, you know, had to keep track of all these video files and and uh, but ultimately it, it all came together. And, you know, the heart behind this whole thing was, you know, our country seems very divided right now, um, it, both politically, I guess, racially somewhat. And it, it shouldn't be like that, in my opinion. And this was just the intent of this was to show people a show of unity and love through song that hopefully we can show people that you know, we're not all tripping and we should, should be thankful for this life that we have and love each other. And, and really that's the heart of the song. So that was the intent and that's how we got it to, to hear. I, I tell you, I shed a tear watching it the first time. It's really moving that song. Oh, you. Yeah. No, so I appreciate you to, it. You go to YouTube, love can heal the world. Jason Peterson, Belair by at iTunes. And uh, so, so, the riots were right near you and Vanessa, right? Primarily the riots oh, happened in South, South Minneapolis. We live in North Minneapolis, but that's I thought, North. it was, uh, it was definitely, it wasn't far. 
but um, you know, south south side. I mean, there was really a lot of devastation. I think close to a billion dollars in damage. Wow. And uh, yeah, and you know, we also have the trial uh, for the officers that were charged with killing George Floyd coming up here in March. So I'm I'm Where praying for peace. Uh, downtown, at, I think downtown at the government center at the courthouse. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. So, so, so justice it, is served, right? We'll see. We'll yeah. see. And I hope, you know, I hope people, um, you know, I hope people can stay safe and it doesn't become real volatile again. Maybe if they listen to the song a bunch of times, it could help the vibe, you know? Yeah, definitely. I know. So we're, we're talking uh, about working with your buddy, Mr. Dave Ellis. You guys went to Berkeley College of Music together, right? We sure did. Yeah. A long time ago. I don't want to date Not, myself, but <laughs> well, what was that experience like? And, and did you guys gravitate towards hanging out and working together right away? Or what was it like? We did. I, I met Dave. I think we're we ended up in this little jam band or something together and are playing some show together initially when I first met Dave. And he uh, he's a huge fan of the Minneapolis Sun. He loved the time and Prince and and he found out that I was from Minneapolis and, you know, who my uncle was. And he's like, oh, man, I got to hang out with this guy. And that's how we first started hanging out. And then we would we would write tunes back then. We have some classic old jams that we used to write on Dave's four track. He always had the gear and a little computer. So we wrote songs back then. And uh, it's it's funny because we've always had a really kindred you know, friendship that we kept alive through all these years, even though we don't, don't get to hang too much. But when we released Stand and Fight, after all these years of knowing each other, that was the first song that we officially released together. Oh. So that was a, a milestone. And we were laughing about that. We finally put a record out, you know. And you both play saxophone, right? Yeah. Dave, Dave is a great saxophone player. He was He's had his own records out under Dave Ellis. And he was also a part of early Charlie Hunter Trio records. Oh, yeah. I remember those some of the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Dave's a talented guy. So he's a great sax player, but he also, part of his being is he's funky. You know, he's like Minneapolis funky. He like legitimately, he's a funky dude. So being being from that scene and having it in your DNA, you, you can spot the, the real deal. People from the outside who can still hang with you guys. Certain ones, not many, though, to be honest with you. Minneapolis has a very unique feel, you know, like the, the true Minneapolis funk and the Minneapolis sound is a very unique thing. And not many people have that thing. And Dave is one of the few not from here that I've heard that really embodies that feel, you know. I saw uh, this this morning and I was really surprised because. Well, Jelly Bean Johnson, I don't know if you saw the feature that they put on the Fox TV out there. I heard about it. I haven't had a chance to yeah. see it yet, but I see it populating on Facebook. I definitely won't well, watch it. Yeah, it's, re it's really it's really cool. Well-deserved. But they gave them nine minutes. I'm like, here they give like a musician like 30 seconds. And it's gone. I forgot. They give a nine-minute feature right on the news. That's beautiful. Well, I'll tell you what. Jelly Bean is one of the humblest um most humble, I should say, uh, most deserving guy of recognition uh, that we have in our scene. He is a wonderful human being and he he deserves it. So I'm very happy, you know, that he's getting that recognition. I guess Jelly Bean's just put, putting out a new record, right? Yeah, he's had it out a while. I think it's five or six. We've been playing a couple cuts on there. He's got uh, he's got Tracy Blake on it. Ronnie Baker. Great. Uh, Lawrence Warrell, it's got it's, you know some really good stuff. So that's beautiful. I, you know, I've known Jelly Bean for so long. Obviously, my uncle Paul worked with Jelly Bean in right. what 1984 with Morris Day in the Time and Purple Rain and all that. So I, I call him Uncle. That's my <laughs> that's uncle, right. Uncle hey, Jelly that's... Man. He, he, you know, he's been a he's such a supporter of. Uh, local talent he always has an encouraging word and is always hanging out on the scene and encouraging guys to go for their dreams and you know he, he's such a genuine cat i'm very happy that he's putting his own records out now so cool 
And, and you know what, what's great about the Minneapolis scene? Of course, COVID kind of put that uh, to rest for temporarily, but you guys have a, like a midweek music scene. People are going out and seeing and playing and supporting live music, right? A little bit, yeah. I, I think they, they're doing some live music at the Minnesota Music Cafe. I okay. think my buddy JB and the routine are doing uh, a, maybe a midweek thing. It, it's not like fully opened up, but there's a few things that are happening. But before COVID shut it down, it was still thriving. Like, like a lot of places are just, you know, basically for the weekends, but you guys have it all week long, right? Oh, sure. Pre-COVID, you know, you could find good music in Minneapolis pretty much every night of the week. Right. There's, right. A, you know, Bunkers. I don't know if you, you ever heard of Bunkers. Oh, yeah. A place the called, combo. called the Ice House. Of course, you have First Avenue here. Um, Minnesota Music Cafe. There's a bunch of really cool venues here. Um, but, you know, oh, that'll, that, that should tell you about this other initiative that my sister and I, along with the a guy named Scotty Harold from Rock the Cause. Um, we put together a little fundraising campaign behind, you know, as an offshoot of the Love Can Heal the World song. And the fundraiser basically is raising money for music education for underprivileged kids, you know, to teach them music, as well as uh, support to these independent music venues that are just dying with right. COVID, you know, and the lockdowns. So th they support a good cause. If anybody wants to check that out, it's, uh, if you go to GoFundMe, it's the Love Can Heal the World campaign. If anybody wants to check that out. Yeah, we'll put a link up on uh, Joe Kelly Radio for, you know, people listen to the podcast. Right up oh, great. There. Thanks, so, Joe. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thanks. You know, your mom is a standout vocalist. Uh, we've had her on the show before. Always nice to talk with her. But you, you, you guys find the time occasionally to do gigs a lot in California, right? You, you and your mom, Linda Peterson. Definitely, a lot of time. You know, well, my mom has gone out to Palm Springs uh, probably for about the last fifteen years. She didn't make it out there this year just because of COVID once again and the lockdowns. But uh, a lot of times I'd just go out and visit mom and she played a couple really cool gigs out there. She had a jam session at a place called the Backstreet Bistro. And sometimes I might be out that way touring with Michael Bolton and have a few days off. And I'd always go sit in with mom and hang with her and also go to the casino, man. We like going gambling every now and then. That's kind of like our thing to do. Um, but uh, yeah, none of that. My mom's act, we're actually going to put out, um, a uh, single for her coming up a track called oh, wow. if it yeah. works don't fix it that right. i'm involved with my mom saying uh paul played guitar ricky played keyboards and co-produced that and that uh that's gonna be coming up too so we're, we're trying to keep the good music going i mean yeah. you know you gotta find the time uh, within this this kind of forced force lockdown to uh you know do keep stay creative i mean that's the like i said before that's the greatest thing about it and it's been nice to be home too for an extended period of time i've been on the road for like 30 years it's actually nice to take a breath you know and just sit yeah well the last actually the last interview i did on wvof was your uncle paul peterson right before really he was coming to new york to do that the trio gig in New York City, he came on the show. That was the last one. No so. kidding. So that must have been March. I remember yeah, he was yeah. out there. He just got out of New York when, when stuff was just going crazy. Right, and so did my uncle know, Ricky. Yeah, it was kind of risky to do the gig, but they did. I, I know Carl Burnett really well. So uh, did Carl play on the gig? Yeah, Carl played and uh Paul's brother in law played on the drums. Right, right, Jay. Yep. Yeah. So they like, did where I didn't was go to the gig. Oh, was it Joe's Cafe or where was that one? It may have been. I didn't go to the gig, but we promoted it like the day before he, he did the show. So I was okay. I was thinking that's kind of risky. We got we got enough kind of illness at home. I wasn't gonna chance it, but you know, they got sure. through it healthy. So yeah, it's hard to believe that this is really getting close to a year of this. So yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah, my last time at the station was March 16th. So yeah, we're coming up around Jeez. a year. So. I was out on tour with Michael Bolton. We we did a, 
uh, tour of the West Coast. Okay. And I was out there. We did like Phoenix, Vegas, Palm Springs, L.A., Orange County. And then my girlfriend flew out and we had a little vacation out that way and then went and saw my mom in Palm Springs. And we flew home together. My girlfriend and I flew home together on March 14th. And that's the last time I've seen an airplane, man. Wow. What was the reaction while you were We kind of sensed something may shut the gig down, right? Were you guys really disappointed? You know, it was, we started, we were hearing, you know, like one of Michael's background vocals, uh, this, this lady named uh, Ashley Lockheed, who's a great singer and she's got her own projects out. Um, she was like really concerned about this virus. And to be honest, I thought she was really overreacting. All I would hear was virus, 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 it, you know, and I was like, ah, I, I didn't really, wasn't aware of what this was going to be at the time, you know? Right. Um, but, but, you know, and then when we were out in Palm Springs, we started hearing more and more about it. We we're still able to go out. I went out to my buddy, uh, uh, Kevin Henry's club out in Palm Springs, Kevin and Doty called the nest and they have live music out there. So I, while we were out there, maybe around the March 10th, 11th of last year, went and jammed with him. Like I always do when I'm out there, really cool club. And, uh, you know, people were still getting together, but we, we were catching wind of what was to come. And, you know, I, I had no idea it would be what it was, man. But I guess you yeah, never know of, in life, huh? Yeah, one of my brothers, he actually was managing a hotel for his uncle in Shanghai, China. So him and his wife, they had like 10 guests within like two weeks. So it basically was shut down. So he and his wife flew back to California and they drove to Vegas to stay with my dad in quarantine. But over there, they kind of know what the virus is, how to handle it, you know, masking up before, because they've been through stuff like that. So sure. Uh, sure. I've noticed he, that yeah. when I, when I tour in Asia, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, masks are much more prevalent as just part of everyday life. And I've, I've seen that for years, you know, right, going through right. Hong Kong or even Japan, uh, Korea, you know, it's, it's much more in the, kind of everyday life to get masked up so did you did you ever play in taiwan i did yeah i played in taiwan yeah. maybe a couple yeah, two lived, three times yeah i lived there for three years i thought I taiwan Richard was really there. cool did you really yeah la yeah well well no i didn't see him but i got a quick story about that i got food poisoning from uh sashimi really like raw tuna fish sure. and i was rushed to the hospital right before the concert so i didn't get to see the show oh no so, yeah but he did play oh. out there yeah but that was um when he paul played in marx's band right i did oh you did okay you did okay but not not yeah. in uh 1989 90 right you're too young for that that may have been about the time that i played with him i actually think that that sounds about right about 89 90 i was on the repeat offender tour okay I wonder if that was the time. Yeah, there was a big thunderstorm and everything. Wow. You know, I don't remember being in Taiwan with him, though. I, I remember playing in Japan and Australia. Okay. And who knows? That, that was a long time ago. Maybe I did. I, I just can't remember. <laughs> so our guest right now, Jason Peterson Delaire, his uh, latest single is Love Can Heal the World with a lot of great friends and family members. And they... Uh, the video is up on YouTube, very moving video, and uh, order it from iTunes as well. And the song Stand and Fight with his buddy David Ellis, Dave Ellis, Berkeley alum. And um, you can also get that on iTunes. Right. And the video is up on YouTube. Who, who's the lady, young lady in the video where you're singing? In Stand and, and Fight? Fight? Yeah. Let's see who would have been on that. We had we had my Dave's uh, Dave's uh, sister Zoe, her okay. daughter's in there, and then Dave's daughter is in there, and then my oh, girlfriend's okay. in there as, as the oh, dancers okay. doing the little dance bit. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. My guys, girlfriend Angela's in there. Time. Okay, cool. Yeah, I love that video. I love the song so. Um, that's got the Minneapolis little Minneapolis funk on it, right, Joe? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, that's that, that's probably why I'm preferential to it. 
<laughs> I will, we, we know you like some Minneapolis funk, man. Right, right. So, hey, uh, your, your crib, at, at least from the video, I, I live in a similar place like that with the brick wall and everything. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a really nice, uh, it's a really nice look. How, how is it recording at home? You know, I, I like it. It's, uh, it's a bit uh, of a natural uh, reverb cham chamber in there. I'll tell you a quick story. I, I got a call just last week. Uh, I got a call from Donnie Osmond out of nowhere. And, you know, I've, I've toured with Donny Osmond for years and written songs with Donny Osmond on some of his records. And Donnie said, hey, he calls me Schmengi. <laughs> Remember the Schmengi <laughs> brothers? Right. Yeah, right. So he calls me Schmengi. Hey, hey Schmengi, uh, can you give me a Zoom call? And he sends me a link. So I Zoomed on. He's like, I have this tune that needs some saxophone on it. I'm like, sure, send it over. So I, I give him the give the thing play a solo on i play like a little horn section thing and he's like i love it can you take the reverb off of it and i'm like donnie i didn't put any reverb on it it's uh oh. that that's the room you know like with those old brick walls uh, that's the sound i get it is what it is i'm like sorry the high ceilings too yes very high yeah, so it's like yeah, it's yeah. got a little bit of a i love the way it sounds but it's not mm -hmm. super dry like a like a pro studio would be but you know what it works yeah, it works. And, it and works. You, I noticed you got the uh, Prince Love Sexy era picture, right? I do. A frank picture of Prince, right? Yeah. Yep. So. I do. You gotta have gotta have the master close by, man. He's yeah. Always, he's always checking in, make sure uh, his disciples are <laughs> on the funk properly. Right. Have you Have you been out to uh, Paisley Park since his his passing? I have. Uh, right the the first year that he passed the first celebration i was okay. invited by jill willis who used to manage prince um back when i was when i worked with prince was 91 92 i initially was part of the paisley park house band and that was with morris hayes and g sharp and some other guys um and the purpose of that band was uh so prince had another band uh, available if he had some other artists that that needed to go do a show as opposed to just using the mpg so jill jill and gilbert davison were managing prince at the time of that era and then we ended up going to uh, we opened uh, prince walked into rehearsal one day with this beautiful girl and said uh y'all are going to be her band now oh. and we're like word <laughs> and it was carmen electra Right, right. If you remember who she is, she she went on to become oh, an actress. But Prince, right. I think you know she might have been one of Prince's girlfriends at at one point, and she was kind of like a rapper. But so anyway, the Carmen show, Carmen Electra Band, uh, ended up opening the Diamonds and Pearls tour in '92 with Prince. So okay. yeah. Jill was the manager at that point, and after Prince passed. Um, I connected with Jill and she invited me to the celebration at Paisley. And so, yes, to answer your question, I have been out there and it's just beautiful. They did a, a wonderful job of keeping it alive. Um, it, it, was, it was pretty deep, you know, especially at, right after he passed. It was, it was very emotional. And the, the band did a, MPG did a part of that show where they had a backdrop of Prince playing and singing purple rain and, and the band playing live with them and it was like it's just you know you couldn't keep your eyes dry you know it was just beautiful yeah i think i've seen a little clip of that thing uh -huh. the way they sync it up looks, looks great yeah it's so you know, cool from from prince's vault of what you think is still out there what what kind of stuff would you be looking more most forward to to seeing you know releasing one day well, for me, for me, my favorite eras of Prince really are from, uh, I got, I got more into the earlier stuff later, but I, I mean, my stuff was Purple Rain, uh, Parade, Love Sexy, uh, Sign of the Times. That kind of era for me uh, was my favorite Prince era. I mean, right. he was, that was the truth to me. You know, we all we all like different stuff from Prince, but that's the stuff that really resonated with me. 
So anything from the vault in, in that time frame, I would say from about 84 to 89, that's what I would look forward to, to hearing the most. Yeah, good. That was a good, good portion of time. I'd love to see more of the concert videos. I'm sure there's sure. tons of them there. Yeah, me too. And he's, me and too. he's, and he's got a few, uh, he's got a few cassette or CDs on my radio show somewhere in there. So. Oh yeah, cool. You send it up to him. Yeah. Did so, you did you ever did you ever know Prince back in the day? Um, I never interviewed him. I met him in person uh, one time in New York, and I had a little disagree with agreement with him online in a chat with him. Where he misunderstood something about another DJ, and he thought it was me. But oh, got wow. it all straightened out. Yeah, that that, that was very interesting. And the guy who confirmed my chat with uh, that it was him as we were typing back and forth, discussing things, Jellybean told me. Huh. Because I, I repeated some of the things that he had, he had said when we were talking, you know, and he says, yep, that was him. <laughs> Jellybean would know. <laughs> Jelly, Jellybean yeah, yeah. would know. Yep. But I tell you, you know, you know how we apologized for it? He didn't call me up or anything. He had, uh, I think he was out on tour in Japan, but he had Paisley Park send, the one night alone box set to my house to play okay. on the air uh, on the air before it was ever released to any radio stations. Wow. So that, that was like his way of apologizing. So that was a cool story. Uh, that's a really yeah. cool story. You know, yeah, Prince, yeah. Prince was uh, you know, Prince was a, a deep cat, man. You know, and I'm sure you've heard a million different stories. Um, you know. He's an interesting cat. I, I got to say, I, I love my time uh, that I got to spend with Prince and, and learn from him. And, and really, I have nothing bad to say. You know, I just it was a, really a time of my life and a blessing to, you know, I was a really young cat, man, to, to be up on tour with Prince. And, you know, I always kind of wanted to do that. And then that dream kind of manifested in my life. So I, I look back fondly on that and. and you know, really enjoyed that time with Prince. Yeah, one thing we're missing from you not being out on tour is all those pictures of all the exotic places around the world. I mean, <laughs> you don't stay in your hotel room just chilling watching ESPN. You're you're out doing things, right? No way, man. I got to get out there. I got a free trip to like Monte Carlo or Singapore. I'm trying to go get it, man. Because how right, else right. am I going to ever afford to get, get to go see all these places, man? I always try to go go out with my buddies. I got a great group of friends with Michael Bolton's band that, um, you know, we all love to get out there and hang and go experience the different cultures. I mean, what a gift that is to be able to see all these places, man. I can't wait till we can get back to doing it. I, I do have a question. Uh, is there any possibility of a, an album coming out in the near future from Frank Frank? <laughs> You know, I would love nothing, but I remember my sister, Vanessa, said, Jason, what do you want to do? I said, I want to do Frank Frank, man. Because <laughs> Frank Frank's fun, man. I have a lot of fun oh, doing yeah. Frank Frank. I, I, I love it. Uh, I, I, that's not a bad idea. I think Frank Frank could be like a cartoon at some point. We'll see what the future holds. But a lot of people really enjoy Frank Frank, man. And he's so, got a Facebook page, right? He does. Frank Frank okay. at Frank Frank. Yeah. Bet on the yep. number four, the Kentucky Derby. I love that one. Come on, number four. <laughs> yes. You know um, it. Frank Frank hanging at Canterbury Downs once in a while, I guess. Yeah, Frank likes to gamble too, like his like his cousin JP Delaire. Yes. So hey, JP, Jason Peterson Delaire, I gotta thank you uh for always coming by and supporting our show. And Lo love that you've continued uh, making great music yourself and your, your family. And, you know, we'll always support the Peterson Delaire, you know, great group of musicians and people. So uh, the listeners should go to iTunes, Love Can Heal the World, Stand and Fight, Jason Peterson Delaire, Dave Ellis, and Jason Peterson Delaire. You got Alita Adams, Ricky P, Ricky Peterson, and the Steels and the, the Pre Glee Choir. And, right. um, so, so hopefully you'll get back on the road soon. 
Definitely, man. Joe, we, we really appreciate your support of the music, man. It's great to uh, get a chance to tune in with you again. And all my love to you guys. And uh, hope to talk to you real soon, okay? All right. Thanks, Jason. Okay, my brother. Talk to you soon.